Let's talk about sports. When people play sports, their motivations for playing can be categorized as either extrinsic or intrinsic. The extrinsic motivations are pretty obvious. To be praised, to be a part of a team, the accolades, the taste of victory, to be the best. All of that's extrinsic. But when I played sports, I always had intrinsic motivations driving me. I played hockey when I was younger, and from an early age, winning or losing was never high on my radar. I'm not even convinced I liked playing games more than I enjoyed practicing. Games were fun. There is an undeniable high from scoring a timely goal or making a key play, but the satisfaction of practice was something longer than a moment. It was something intangible. The repetitive action, the perfection of drills, learning, positioning. I can't remember a single game or goal from when I played competitively, but I do remember lots of nights in my driveway just lining up pucks, taking shots, collecting the pucks, and lining them back up. I played hockey for hockey's sake. If you've ever had your friend toss you your keys, or had to squeeze through a tight space, then you've experienced kinesthesis. The unconscious ability to calculate the key's trajectory, where to put your hands to catch the keys, measuring the tightness of a space, and contorting your body appropriately, all of that is a part of your kinesthetic sense. I still play hockey from time to time. Most rings have something called a stick and puck, which is basically a free skate, but they bring out the nets for people to skate around and take shots. When I go to a stick and puck, the kinesthetic sense comes back to me. Taking full strides, stick handling, and shooting the puck are all very natural. I have an unconscious control over my body, its movements, and the sport itself, creating a kinesthetic satisfaction. I like to think I'm pretty good at hockey too, but I definitely know my place. There comes a point with any competitive outlet where you become good enough to realize just how bad you are. I know I can play, and play well, but I also have the ability to recognize the greatness in someone. When you watch someone who is truly great at their craft, someone with a complete mastery and control, there is a self-expression and beauty that is enviable. There is an aesthetic to the kinesthetic. This control and this mastery are a large driving force in my enjoyment of video games. For an example of this kinesthetic satisfaction, this aesthetic of mastery and control, you can watch any competitive fighting game. The parallels between sports and esports are obvious, but video games can do more than that. While esports and regular sports are more naturally a multiplayer experience, video games can create that same kinesthetic satisfaction in a single player setting. Dust Force was a game created with the speedrunning community in mind. If you've ever watched a speedrun, then you've seen it. The same mastery, the same control, the same satisfaction. But if you've actually tried to speedrun a game, then you've probably been met with the same disappointment I have. Most games don't have the depth of movement to create a wholly satisfying kinesthetic experience. The extrinsic motivation of lower times values optimization over self-expression. It's not true of every game or every runner, but speedrunning is less akin to the kinesthetic satisfaction of a sport and more like learning a song on an instrument. Self-expression is possible, but limited if you want to play the song correctly. I see this effect the most with Trihex when he's playing Yoshi's Island. His expressive game style and intrinsic love for the freeform control of Yoshi is a direct hindrance to his speedrunning. He had been playing Yoshi's Island since he was very young, but his natural kinesthetic control is choked by the strict optimization of a speedrun. You know, Yoshi Island, I was in the self-worth pit self-worth tethered to my skill at the game pit for the entirety of me streaming it. I was never really happy when doing it. Dust Force is a game designed to recreate the speedrunning aesthetic, but through a purely intrinsic and more kinesthetically satisfying means. There is a focus on character control and complex movement that is not present in other games with more narrative aspirations. In Dust Force, there is no narrative. The drive to complete the game comes purely from the intrinsic satisfaction of playing the game gameplay for gameplay's sake. Pausing to restart takes little time and music isn't interrupted while practicing a level. The practice is the gameplay so the flow and experience is streamlined. Movement is the focus and all interruptions to movement are minimized. The hub world is an obstacle course in itself making even level selection an expression of movement. Achieving an SS rank is the ultimate goal on Dust Force levels. And while speed is a key factor in getting the rank, optimization is not. To achieve an SS rank, you must clean all of the dust on a given level without breaking combo from either getting hit or spending too much time not cleaning. The SS rank gives Dust Force an objective endpoint, reducing the need for optimization and freeing the levels up to self-expression. Routing and practicing a level for the SS rank is self-expressive in itself, but the SS rank also allows you to fail. When you flub an input in a speedrun, you have lost optimization, and any loss to optimization is a fail state. The optimized sequence has been ruined. 
but at Dust Force there is no optimized sequence. When you flub an input, you can still recover. Your mastery of the character, the control, and more importantly your ability to fix and make unconscious adjustments and adaptations on the fly is the real test of your kinesthetic sense. And if you succeed in maintaining your SS rank, it creates a real satisfaction. The character's full 360 movement and depth combined with the speed creates a forced kinesthetic experience. Dust Force has a wide variety of levels ranging from very easy to impossibly hard, but this kinesthetic satisfaction is present from beginning to end. Even after completing the last level, you can play the easiest level in the game and still be satisfied. Just existing in the world, controlling the characters and their movements, feels good, and even as you get better, the appeal of the earlier levels still exists. I wrote the script right after completing the game, by achieving an SS rank on Yada Difficult, the final level of the game. It's a 3 minute gauntlet that took me around 70 hours of practice and gameplay to achieve a good run. I played the same level for 4 weeks straight, and I honestly enjoyed every second of it. It felt good to play, to move. I could feel myself getting better. Some obstacles became mechanical, other obstacles I had to change tactics on. In the end, I made two potentially fatal mistakes on my run, but I was able to quickly adapt and maintain my combo. It is rare for a game to get my heart racing, but the level would regularly make me sweat. Getting to that final obstacle, only to fail and start from the beginning, felt like a real physical blow, but it never made me angry. I was always having fun and ready to give it another go. Dust Force is undeniably hard. If you want an easy game, you can still get a lot out of Dust Force, but if you want the complete experience, it takes a lot of hours. It's hard, but it wants to be beaten. After every run, a recording is automatically created and sent to the leaderboard. You can rewatch your own runs and the runs of every other player that has completed any given level. Rewatching my runs after many hours of practicing, I can see what I saw when watching the kinesthetics of the truly great. I can see the control, the mastery, the self-expression. And I can't help but find it beautiful.